Making money is hard in Tarkov? Well, it is if you don't know what you're doing and that's why I'm making this video because I want to share my experiences with you guys so you have an easier time finding those sweet, sweet rubles, that sweet, sweet loot in Tarkov. And I'm going to show you guys today how I do that on Shoreline. Uh, first, we're going to go over a couple of kits that I'm using from budget to deluxe to use on those uh, money runs. Then we'll talk about the keys you might need and then I'm going to show you a 2 million rubles run, a 1.1 million rubles run and an 800k rubles run without even touching the shoreline resort in that last case. For those of you joining us for the first time, hi, my name is TTB. I've been doing YouTube content for over 10 years now and I also do live streaming. My focus is on helpful videos with a healthy dose of fun and some good old German insanity. Um, I've been playing Tarkov for a month now. I'm absolutely hooked on this game and I want to share my experiences and my learnings with you guys so that you can benefit from this. If you find this video helpful, consider hitting that subscribe button and also do check out my Twitch livestream where we will be diving even deeper into Tarkov. Now let's get going. Also guys, for quick navigation, use the timestamps in the first pinned YouTube comment down below. Now let's talk about the builds. The first build I'm going to show you is a barebone build. It just uses a PM 9x18 pistol, two additional mags, 25 rounds in total, and a Burkut or Scav backpack coming in at a total of 27k. Or if you want to add a tactical rig, a Scav vest on top of that to be able to use a, uh, for example, Karmet kit um, on a hotkey, then it's going to come in at 31k. So not that pricey and uh, lots of risk versus reward going on here. Then we have what I call the basic kit. This is a MP433 pistol with two additional mags. We've got 55 rounds in total, PST GZH ammo. That is pretty good ammo. We've got a Burkut here. We've got a Carmet kit. We've got painkillers and an Alu splint with five uses. Altogether, 55K. And I highly recommend you add the GSSH01 active headset. It's only going to come in at 12K or if you want, just add a better headset if you want to. But uh, the total set price will be 66K. And that headset has saved my ass countless times because I could hear enemies coming around corners and I could either run or engage them prior to them shooting me in the face. And by the way, guys, if you only have an alpha container, uh, you definitely want to go ahead and get a documents case. They are very cheap, 176k or so, as opposed to the 600 for a key tool. And as you can see, they can actually not only hold keys, but also Bitcoin, GP and currency. So that's really, really nice to have. And it's only going to take up two slots in your alpha container. Very, very valuable in my opinion. Okay, so much for that. Let's talk about the creme de la creme or the what I call the deluxe set. Of course, there is no limit on how how much Chad you can bring here. But um, running context here, I'm running a uh, armor class three helmet. We're running a six P five fifteen armor class four rig. We're running a pilgrim backpack at thirty eight k. Running an FN five seven. This is a one hundred k build and sixty one rounds of SS one ninety armor that will go through up to class four, very, very reliably. That build is about 250K, but as I said, guys, there is no limit. You can bring a million rubles worth of kit to the map. Is it worth it? Probably not. This is just something I've scavenged together through a couple of runs. Okay, now let's talk about the keys that you need. Um, in the West Wing, we need the Office 104. That is a potential um, keycard spawn for a blue keycard. Office 112, West Wing, same thing, also blue keycard spawn. Then we've got the uh, West Wing room 220 key, a uh, very nice key to have. Then uh, I also have the 221 key. Um, and then on top of that, the 301 key. 301 is, for example, really nice if you want to try and farm for some high end medical stuff. Then we have the health resort utility room key in here. Also nice to have. I've got the health resort management office safe key because I always go to the admin building or a lot of the times go to the admin building. In the east wing, well, we can get room 205. That's nice to have. Room 20, 226. It's also really, really good and also very, very highly recommended. And room 310. Very cheap key, but very, very useful to make a lot of money. I've also got the weather station safe key in here, although I don't think we actually need it. I think that key is actually useless. We've got the cottage safe key and the key to the back door of the cottage that uh, that safe is in. And we also have the health resort warehouse safe key. Now, all these safe keys, guys, you might think are a little bit overkill, but those safes have netted me a quite a bit of really, really good stuff over the past few weeks. So I highly recommend to always open saves if you can. And then we've got HEP station storage as well. Uh, it's a power station 
top level storage there's also some good stuff in here as well now let's go ahead go over those prices real quick 200k about for the office 104 west wing key now that's not too much but, um, given the fact that if you find that blue key card it sells for about 5 million rubles right now office 112 same thing 26k right here so these are good investments but not insanely needed i would rather look for um keys like this one for example the west wing 220 key it's really really nice to have um, then we have the 221 key. This is necessary, for example, to access the uh, the red key card in uh, 218. Then we have the 301 West Wing key, as I already said. There's some high-end medical stuff in there, Ledex and whatnot. Um, so that key is very pricey at about 700k. Health resort utility rooms. Um, if you can check them, it's nice to do that. And at 23 or 29k, it's actually really, really cheap to get. Um, what else do we have here? Health resort management office safe key. Highly recommended, 200k, and you're gonna check that in most runs, anyways. Uh, let me looking at the East Wing. East Wing 205, highly recommended key, about 150k to buy. You can find some really good stuff in there, some some high-end loot to sell. Uh 226 is here as well. That is um, a very, very nice room for meds. Can also have LEDX. Um, and then last but not least, of course, the uh, 310 key. As I said, quite cheap at 74K. And that always has some really, really good and pricey stuff in it. So also highly recommended. Then let's look at uh, this here. That's the weather station safe key. Uh, 54K, but I think the weather station safe is by default unlocked. So that might actually be a useless key in here. Um, I also have, as I said, the cottage safe key and the key to the backdoor offset cottage. If you don't have this key, you can only um, loot one safe. And if you don't have the cottage back entrance key, as it said here, then you cannot loot um, two safes on the map. So I recommend to get this combination because that's netted me a lot of money as well. Then the health resort warehouse safe key. Nice to have. It's an area that we check anyways. So we can just take a couple of seconds and open that one up. And HEP storage. A little bit pricier, but that can have some nice high value attachments in there as well. Now, enough about the keys. Let's go ahead and do some looting and here we are on our first spawn guys i'm just gonna go ahead open the map on the other screen here and uh, we're dropping in at the uh, scaf house this is the southeastmost spawn that you can get um and these are runs that i've done um basically like maybe five runs ten runs in i'm still finding my bearings here i found the scaf tower now i understand where i'm on the map we're on the east side so we have to go northwesterly direction um what's really good on this map to use to orient yourselves is a walls like the outer walls of the map but then also power lines and um, mar marks basically like the weather station for example or the radio tower or once you get to know it that plateau where the um, shoreline resort is actually standing on so now we're passing under the power lines uh we're past rock bridge right now and up here is already resort now, if you're unfamiliar with the map and you're coming up on the resort on the side and you're wondering, is it west side or east side? If it's west side, it has some writing on the wall on top and you can enter immediately through the wall. This is not the case here. Um, this is just a normal wall and you have to go around to this side or the other way around to get into the area here. Some shots fired already. I'm uh, slowing this game down now to normal speed. We're going to go in here in the east wing and we're going to check room 205. We will jump over this little fallen uh, piece of furniture here open up 205 be careful here guys always look to your left and to your right um get in here and look in this drawer and we find a lion immediately 120k that goes into our prison wallet which means we remove the painkillers and the ifac put the lion in there nice bit of money here and that's all we should do in this room um i'm gonna go ahead here and loot that med case as well but guys we're wasting time here we're wasting time here. If we're really gonna go for efficient loot runs, then you cannot be wasting any time on checking in here for keys. One can be on the ground, one can be in the key box on the wall. Um, we're gonna go ahead, go up here towards room 310, which is uh, this way. And then, yeah, very iconic location, very hard to miss. Open this thing up and uh, this can have all sorts of stuff spawning. You can have medallions spawn, it can have chains, gold chains, uh, lions, uh, cat statues, you name it. It's all possible to spawn in here. I'm gonna loot those uh, bags here as well. I wanna level up my, my skills a little bit. But as I said, guys, this is all wasting time a little bit. So I'm even drinking an energy drink here. No problem. Drink and loot at the same time. Now I need to get my bearings. As I said, pretty new to this game at this point. Uh, going down now and towards room 
219, I believe. It is going to be on the left side here, the only door that is open by default. We're gonna go ahead, rush through here towards the balcony, into the other side, and we're gonna check this table right here. No red keycard next to the uh, laptop. I'm gonna go ahead and loot this weapon case here. Once again, that is very optional. Um, it's wasting a lot of time, and if you open up five, six, or let's say ten containers, you're gonna be wasting over a full minute looting this stuff, guys. And so somebody else might go to do what's the juicy loot first. So you gotta learn this. You gotta get comfortable with it. That's literally the only way to deal with this. Opening up the duffel bag. Well, we find some milk. Not a problem. The got milk joke is now finally implemented. I'm also gonna go ahead and use a painkiller here because I'm a little bit afraid that we might have uh, enemy contact and I don't want to get caught without a painkiller in my uh, veins and uh, therefore getting slowed down and getting killed. Let's open up uh, 226 here. And with 226, east wing, very important, close the door and check behind the door. We find a hot rod, we find an aloe splint and we find a lead axe and that's 1.6 million rubles in our pockets right now just by this one item. And it of course goes immediately into our prison wallet, uh, find some uh, food here as well. Um, again, you can open up those uh, containers, you don't have to. Um, sometimes there's good stuff in there, I found AS valves and whatnot in there, but um, most of the times it's just a time sink, so you gotta make a judgment call here, right? Uh, we can also open up this uh, weapons drawer. Let's go ahead and open that up, see if there's anything in there. Yep, oh, got a shotgun, all right, can grab that. Um, you have to close this, close this door if you want to get around the corner again. Uh, then we can also check this container right here, about half here in the MP133. And we find another grip here, alright. Find a flashlight and another MP133, alright. And I'm wasting a lot of time here, guys, and you'll see why I don't like that in a couple of seconds here. I'm also opening this grenade case to try and see what kind of grenades are available. There's always one or two nades in here normally, so we get it with F1 and an RGD, okay? And then we look at this table, we find the LCD screen, and I'm thinking, yeah, score! And then I see, oh, shoot, we just found a Tetris, and now I just threw the golden lion or the big lion out of the pouch, out of the gamma, because we're gonna load in the Tetris. And uh, we're gonna add some other stuff in here as well, probably the LCD. And I'm gonna make some room here for the line. You need to know or you need to learn over time, of course, guys, because there's a lot of items in the game. Um, but over time, you need to learn the value of each item and most importantly, the value per slot taken. That line, for example, is about 130k, but it takes up six slots. So overall, it's maybe 20k per slot, whereas the Tetris is 75k per slot. That lead X is 1.6 million per slot because it only takes one slot. So you gotta learn over time these values and don't get frustrated if you make a bad call or whatnot. It's, it's just a game and it is a long learning experience. I'm, just a month in or so, um, and I'm still baffled by how much I don't know. Look, look at that, we got a final thermometer. That's 50k, that's actually worth more than the LCD, but because I don't know that at this point, I just put the thermometer into the vest and I keep the LCD in my uh, container. Now I'm getting very, very, very nervous, guys. I wanna get out of here, so I'm gonna jump from the balcony. This can lead towards you breaking your legs. In this case, I actually end up breaking your legs, so I'm gonna use the splint, med up, and then I'm just gonna try and run around here. Let's see what we end up with. I was trying to go for the um, rock extract, but there are no green smokes here, so not available. So I'm just running through the hills right here, uh, past terminal, and then now we're running towards cottages and construction. I'm using the names from the map that I'm linking in the description down below. And uh, between construction, the cottages, cottages, as I said, um, those are the uh, places where we have the safe keys for and the entry keys for. But we're not going to use that. We're going to go straight into downtown and into the village and uh, then hug the wall to get to the tunnel extract and get the hell out of here because we're carrying quite a bit of loot and I don't want to lose it. So here we go. Tunnel extract, expo commencing, get our heads down and get ready for celebrations because that was a juicy, juicy loot run, almost 2 million rubles. And it doesn't look like 2 mil, but it is almost 2 million rubles. The Tetris can be uh, exchanged one by one for a Bitcoin. And uh, the outlet X, as I said, is highly valuable. I'm not going to show you um, everything right now. I'm just going to show you how it looks like after I sold everything. So we went from like 250 ish K to 560 ish K. There is the price for the LED X skin resuminator. So let's say 1.6 million. So yeah, 1.8, 1.9 million in total for that loot run. Jumping into the next loot run right here, we're spawning once again in the south, uh, southern side. This time, this is Road to Customs. I just opened up the grenade box that is there, trying to see if I can find a grenade. I uh, actually found a Zaria. And once again, I'm using the power lines uh, as a kind of a 
a way to gauge where I'm at. This is once again the plateau. We're coming in onto the resort once again on the eastern side, same place as before, and going up the stairs. You always want to listen, guys. You always want to listen. This time I'm actually running up to the third floor immediately. Actually, no, that second floor, sorry about that. Third floor, and okay, now we're in the third floor, opening up 310. These um, hallways are going to be a huge maze for you until you learn them. So, unless you got like 30, 40 games down on this map, you will be um, <laughs> in a little bit of trouble. Uh, it's gonna take some time to get used to it, so don't go crazy if it doesn't happen immediately. We just looted a pro kill medallion, that's I think an easy 150 ish K or so in our back pocket. So, we're already doing really, really good. We are already doing. Um, we're already positive, I would say. Yeah, the Procure is about 130, so we're already positive in terms of cash made this run. We also found some nails, and we also found a filter. The nails are about 30k, the filter is 20k, so we have a total of 180k right now in our prison wallet. There was a window just breaking, and I didn't know at this point what window that was. I just thought it was a f uh, shot uh, from an enemy or whatnot, but actually there was a window on the lower floor, and since I didn't hear a shot, it was a melee weapon that broke it, so somebody, potentially a hatchling, is going to be in the east wing now which i know now i didn't know it at the time when i was recording this video so i can hear some movement i know that somebody's coming i'm trying to take cover here and somebody's coming on the door and well number one i'm inexperienced number two the net code has some problems number three uh, the aggressive player tends to win in such engagements so i just got one shot into the head we're not wearing a helmet and uh, that guy did a good job of killing me here so Am I sad about this? No, because we actually went out with three times as much as we went in. So uh, we made a net profit of two times as much. Coming in, this time from the front side, I'm going to check this van right here, this uh, first aid van. Um, on that passenger side door, there can actually be a blue keycard, so it's always nice to check that. We're going to go into the east wing once again, uh, check the key spawn, and then we go ahead and check room 205. I'm speeding all this up, guys, so you don't have to sit through that all the time. I'm also checking the med box here for blood set over syringes. Uh, then we go up here, go to room 310, and see what we can find. And we find some cash here, but just some duffel bags. This is not, not a good run so far, but that is okay. You never know what will happen. So, let's go down again, go towards uh, 219. And I think I just heard movement. Yeah, I definitely heard some movement here, and it was to our right. So, checking this room here, nothing in here, no keycard in here. So, once again, at this point, I didn't have enough knowledge. Where is that guy? I don't know. I thought he might be below me or something. No, no, no. He's actually right now in 226-225, uh, potentially looting this, and then exiting the room. While um, I, as a new player, I'm a little bit scared right now, so I'm checking this weapon crate to see if maybe I get lucky with a vial or something. But uh, the game says no. So, uh, let's go ahead and... Uh, well, you have two options. Now you either flee or you fight, and I'm trying to think, oh, what, what, what are you going to do, right? New player, indecision. Um, okay, let's go ahead and try to fight. Um, there is uh, room 226, it's already open, that's a telling sign, so somebody has been through here. Um, I hear movement to my right, so it's safe to assume he actually ran downstairs. And uh, I want to go ahead now and I want to go towards the admin building because I haven't looted that yet. And I think that's a good chance that there nobody has been through there yet. So, slowly making my way over there. I'm not hearing any movement right now, so let's go downstairs. And I know this guy is in the general area, but I have no idea exactly where he is. Now I can tell you he's probably right around the right corner here. Um, gotta run through that connecting corridor here. Okay, and I hear movement behind me, and I hear angry rushing shouting behind me. I don't know if the guy just wants to die or whatnot. I have no idea. Um, spoiler alert, it's the same guy that got me last round. Only this time, he's running through an open field, and I have a uh, clear line of sight, clear shot, uh, and I'm not shitting my pants. So, we take him down, we kill him. Uh, unfortunately, there's no loot upon him, so... Uh, Kind of a pointless kill, but on the plus side, now we have a uh, peace of mind that nobody's behind us, and we can now loot this building here in peace. I'm gonna come around the corner here, open this door up here at the billiard table, check this for some keys. Nothing here, maybe check the weapons crate for a weapon. Um, once again, no luck, we get pineapple juice. Then we get uh, over here, there can be some stuff in that um, little cupboard over there. We check this room, that's uh, the um, safe key that we could use that I didn't have at that time for the... Um, 
uh, storage area. This is the syringe that we just picked up, so that goes into our prison wallet. Very, very nice. That's a door that you can't open, so I just kicked that for no reason. Uh, in here, you can also find some goodies and another key on that uh, seat over there. Um, and then, now I'm just going to check here these uh, computers for potential flash drives. I found quite a few flash drives here, just checking these PCs, opening up that door. Now we're going into the uh, head office in here. There can be keys and some good stuff here on, uh, as you can see, on those... Um, walls over there, We've got a hose in here now, um, nothing in the safe. Then back here, there can be graphics card that spawn over here. It's a really, really nice room to check as well. Also flash drive. And then we open uh, this room right here where the uh, safe is located. And we find also a Tetris, which is a really, really nice find. And then I look at the table and go like, what the hell is that? Yep, there's a graphics card on the table right now as well. So let's get that graphics card secured as fast as possible. And uh, I should probably also put the syringe into the gamma because syringes are also highly valuable. Um, opening up the safe here, what can we find? Oh, we find a golden skull and some rubles, so I'm gonna put the hose out. Uh, we're gonna add the syringe to the gamma container as well. And as you can see, I'm stacking my money here in the uh, docs case, always to make sure that we have some space in there. Well, that was a successful run. I mean, the Tetris is 150k because it exchanges for Bitcoin, and that graphics card is about 350k, so we're about 500k in the plus already. That doesn't even count the golden sky ring and all the other stuff we have, so uh, this is this is a really, really nice, nice run already. I'm really happy about that. And I'm checking the West Wing. We're coming in from the uh, central area, and I'm going to check um, past room 112, which I can't open right now. I didn't have the key at the time. I'm just moving to room 104 to see if somebody's opened it. That's a telltale sign that somebody's been here. Uh, um, not the case, so we open that up on that table, no key here, but we get a Salawa and another Salawa, very nice, so good point to go ahead and restock some meds. And now we're going to go uh, topside to the uh, second floor and go past this barbed wire, and uh, we're going to check a room to our left, past that light here and the room to our right. Just go past that one uh, light here over there. We find another lion and uh, some other meds here. Very, very nice. Let's drop this stuff here. Get those two big, <laughs> two big healing cases. Really, really nice. These go for like 45k or so each. So also nice to have. And now I remember there's a room I forgot to loot over here on the right side. Open that one up. And uh, check this for some loot as well. There can also be loot on the crates here, but nothing there right now. Normally you find like some bomb or whatnot. Uh, no red keycard on that blue, um, whatever, whatever, whatever you call it, the blue barrel. So um, nothing there. We find the laser pointer here that I can't put on anything. So let's throw up the wrench, get that. The only red keycard spawn we haven't checked yet this round would be the one in the gym down below. Um, moving around the corner once again, back to this stairwell area, and I'm gonna go move down here, and I'm gonna run through this area. Here, actually, there's a, there's a tube here as well as some cutting scissors. So again, once again, really, really nice, valuable loot. I'm leaving the cutting scissors on the ground right now, which is a bad move. I'm just gonna run through that uh, dry bath area, and here are another second stairs, and in here could be the red keycard, but once again, unfortunately, no luck. If you find the red keycard, that's 20 million for you. I hope you have a free spot in your secure container at that point, and you, I hope you chuck it in there fast enough before you get killed, <laughs> because that is highly, highly valuable. So, got two Survive 12s with us. Um, I just chose to drop a cellar while I get that uh, metal scissors here. There we go. Good move. Pop a painkiller and uh, also see some propane here, also 50k, so let's go ahead, maybe drop another car med kit, another saliva, do some more little Tetris, okay, got everything in here. And now it is just a question of getting home safe. I'm just listening right now to see if there are anybody, is anybody out there that might be dangerous. I'm hearing for, listening for any shots or whatnot, but since that's not happening, we're gonna book it out of here and make a straight beeline once again for the tunnel exit. If you're spawning on the west side of the map, guys, you will always have to go to customs exit, uh, road to customs on the east side. And if you're spawning on the east side, you will always have to go to the tunnel exit on the west side. There's also two other exits that you can use. One is the pier boat, which is a little bit sketchy and rarely open. And then there is also the rock passage. But for that, always uh, keep a lookout for green flares. If the green flares are not there, then rock passage is not open. So once again, tunnel exit. Uh, uh, we're out of here, and that is about 1.1 million rubles in total in loot. And we have barely invested anything. So, these runs work, these runs are really, really nice. Now, what do you do if you hear a lot of shots? What do you do if somebody aggressively pushes you? Well, guys, 
what is our goal in this run? Our goal is to make money. Our goal is not to fight. Our goal is not to be the biggest moose on the block. Our goal is to make money. So if you see somebody that is geared, if somebody starts chasing you with a full chat outfit with, uh, I don't know, Silence M4 or whatever, and you lift the tail a tail, get the hell out of there. Go to the next building. Go to the admin building that is rarely visited. Or go loot the village. Don't stick around. Don't stick around and don't try to fight because uh, you're shooting basically blanks against somebody who's uh, coming at you with assault rifles. So don't take that fight. Play smart. Play smart. The best way to get through these fights most of the time is to just avoid them. Because you're not playing this game right now to choose a fight. You're playing it to make money. There we go. There is some money coming in. That was from 1.4 to almost 2.4 million after selling some of the stuff. Uh, this is just all from the flea market. Also very important, guys, you need to know the values of those items, both the vendor prices as well as the flea market prices. And sometimes the flea market prices are extremely much higher than the vendor prices. For example, uh, nails. Okay. Now we're spawning in once again. This is on the um, western side of the map. And this is going to show you guys a different route here. What I'm going to be taking is a route from a village to uh, downtown and then towards the cottages into construction. And from there, we're going to go somewhere else. So uh, I passed a few uh, secret stashes here on the way. That's not a problem. Here we are now, right now, at the entrance to the cottages. This door is always closed. The open cottage that doesn't require a key always has the front door uh, closed. So as you can see, here is the way that we've been taking from the village to downtown into the cottages. Then we're going to go into construction, to terminal, through uh, the central area of the map, past weather station, down to CCP Temp, and then road to customs. That is going to be the way that we're taking uh, this time. I hope this visualization helps you guys out a little bit. Now, we're in the uh, first cottage and we're looting the um, jackets right here. I'm speaking this gameplay up a little bit. Uh, there's two doors up here that you can open. Uh, one door that's already open, it has a weapons locker in it and a PC that you can check for a flash drive once again. Then we open the two closed doors. Uh, one will have a safe in it. Uh, once again, we'll have some nice loot. We get some rubles here, I believe. Yep, about 4k rubles. Um, the other room has a weapons locker with one of these small saves up top. And this time in that safe, we find a gold chain, actually, and some more rubles. So that is about uh, 10k rubles uh, so far in cash, plus the gold chain. Let's say about 35 to 40k rubles that we have with us at this point in time. So this one is already financed. Um, checking some other rooms here, but there's nothing in here in the side room. Uh, this back room that we can go to has a duffel bag, as well as a uh, key stand where there can uh, be a key. So let's check the duffel bag here. Uh, get some apple juice once again. So let's go ahead and juice up once again. Um, then we'll leave this building and go into the next one. Now, you can go to the next uh, big cottage uh, just by going towards the back of this one and then jumping over some wooden spools to get over there. But uh, you can just take the front way as well. This door is always open and this cottage is, uh, the front door is locked. You can't go through that. And the back door is the one that you open with that uh, cottage key. So let's go ahead, open up the back door. Um, and these cottages rarely get hit, guys. Most people just beeline it for the shoreline resort. And uh, that means that you can find a lot of loot uh, in here. Um, of course, most importantly, you have to go towards the upper side of this building because once again there is two doors in there and the third room that you can loot uh, open up the doors uh, one of those doors will have a weapons locker once again and a safe we open that with our safe key and that's what we'll find burp, 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 burp. Um, there's a teapot in there so if you just bought that safe key for that one occasion it's almost already financed by opening up the safe once if you're lucky <laughs> and we just found a book. Okay, so teapot and book together are about 100k uh, with the gold chain and the cash that we've looted. I would say about uh, about 150-ish k with the propital, 170-ish k. So um, it's looking up for us. Things are looking very, very good. I'm just checking here to see if what's going on. When you check these cottages, guys. Um, there will be scavs. You will hear them walk around outside. It will be very unnerving because they're rustling and, and all the time. But uh, yeah, just ignore it. Just leave through the back door. Here we go. And I'm going to push, as I said, past the construction side. Actually, through the construction side. I didn't know the map very well at this point. There's actually a secret stash here as well that we didn't hit. And we're going to push towards terminal. And uh, see what we can do here. That was one scav I just took down. And now we're going to go into terminal. I didn't see that scav on the right-hand side, but he's going to announce himself. There we go. Let's go ahead and try to do some damage here. That's the uh, M9A uh, pistol. Uh, it's available for dollars, hard dollars. 
I'm really, really bad at shooting this guy, so let's go ahead, relax, take a chill pill, uh, maybe take some better aim, take him down. Alright, okay. I have never been to that terminal area before, so I didn't know what to expect. We got a 3M armor that is used for quests that actually sells quite well for like 30k or so. I uh, got a Saiga off of him, I'm opening up some cars. Go loot the second guy as well, pick up an AKSU. Um, circuit board in his backpack, okay, not too bad. And uh, nothing else. Alright, well done. Now let's get into the terminal station. I'm just checking this uh, bus here for some stuff. And in the terminal station I found that there are some um, registers, some cash registers, and also filing cabinets, guys. And it's always nice to check filing cabinets. Boom! Terra Group access keycard. 150k in our pocket. It's worth checking through this stuff, guys. Don't just try to go for the big stuff. Invest a little bit of time. Especially when you're off, uh, off the main threaded paths. There we go, another blue keycard. Uh, not a blue keycard, but a Terra Group's abscess keycard. Very important, the blue keycard is 2 million, this is just 150k. But hey, 2 times 150k is 300k, I'll take that. No problems, no questions asked. Some other good loot in here. Oh, we also put up a big coin off this dude and <laughs> propane gas. So, yeah, um, 150 plus 300, 450 plus the propane plus the helix. Uh, plus all the other stuff. Yeah, we're, we're, we're easily sitting at uh, 700, 800k right now, guys. And we haven't even touched the freaking resort. And you know what we're going to do right now? We're going to leave. Uh, my, my actual plan was to go through power station through the middle here. But uh, then I walk towards power station. I don't see a sniper scav. I think I'm very safe here. And then this. Still safe. Not so safe anymore. Suppressed shot. I have no idea where it came from. The only thing I know is we are the hell out of here. I'm not gonna mess with that. Instead, we're going to opt to go towards a different point of danger. And that is, of course, the uh, resort. But uh, we're gonna cross through the top here, past the helicopter area. And then uh, cut south between um, power station and weather station. Once again, use those power cables to orient yourselves. Now we're going past Weather Station, and now we're heading towards Cranes and uh, the CCP Temp Exfil. The CCP Temp Exfil um, could be open sometimes. You just have to watch for whether the lights are on or not. In my case, the lights are not on, so unfortunately I can't exfil there. And uh, this is the first time I've, I've ever been um, basically in this area on this map. And um, I'm just running around here thinking, okay, yeah, let's just cut to the right side. Let's stick to the side of the map and... Then I walk into something and I thought, okay, grenade? No. There was no grenade. I stepped into a mine because there's a minefield. There's signs that say minefield. But, uh, well then, uh, I guess it takes a little bit of pain to make me read signs. So uh, let's go ahead and hide behind that uh, car here and uh, heal up as much as we can. Use our splint, uh, heal our broken legs, and then get the hell out of here. Once again, here we have the scaff tower. You guys know that scaff tower from before already. That's where we started twice. And uh, following that road, we will be at the road to customs and going for the exfil. I think I just saw a target here. Uh, maybe a scav. Yep, there was a scav over there. We took him down. Uh, took a little bit of his stuff. That's all right. And there is the exfil. I'm not going to be able to get one of these grenades, I think. But uh, I'm going to try. Yeah, unfortunately, it wasn't in my inventory afterwards. But there you go. We stepped on a mine. Got some really, really good loot here. We also got a water filter as well. Um, and this is about 800k worth of loot without even touching the building, the big one. So, guys, as I said, like just go ahead, get comfortable with the map, uh, understand what loot spawns where, and that's going to take time. So don't force it, have fun, and uh, don't stress yourselves. Yeah, and uh, in the end, good things will happen. I hope this video was helpful to you guys. If it was... I would be very happy to see a thumbs up. I would be very happy to see a uh, comment down below. If I did get something wrong, let me know. As I said, I'm very new to this game. Um, if you are somebody who is uh, more experienced in the game, you might not have gotten as much out of this video as if you're just starting out. But hopefully there was some good information in here for you guys. This has been TTB. Hope to see you in one of my live streams soon. Take care, guys, and have a great day.